What is up, everybody? Welcome back to episode of Ford Air, another What the Truck. We got Casey here. Casey, what the truck? How's it going, guys? What up? Uh, so, just want to give you a little insight on my 48. Um, tell you a little road to getting it finished, what it took to get it there. Um, pardon my neighbor, he's mowing his yard right now, but uh, <laughs> hopefully y'all can hear me. It's real life over here, guys. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not gonna, world, the world can't stop for this. So, um, this is my 1948 Ford F1. I built a truck back in 2016 for SEMA. It was a 49 F1. And at the time, I, I couldn't have everything I wanted at one at one time, I guess you could say. So I had to sell it to build my green truck into what it is today. Um, so I sold it to buy some parts. And I kind of regret selling that truck ever since I sold it. And The patina, honestly, doesn't even make sense how cool the patina was. The patina was awesome. And I, I'll have to send you some pictures of it. Like I pulled it out of a field of like 20 of these things and they had to use a rollback wrecker to pick it up and move it out of the way because it was like three deep in there. So it was a really cool truck. I saw a vision with it immediately and um, just built it. And we drove it to SEMA and back, had a great time. And like I said, I missed it a lot. I bought another truck a uh, year and a half ago, two years ago, whatever it was now. And I was gonna build another patina one. Customer had started this project or parts of this project and kind of just lost motivation on it. So I got it from him. It's a um, Roadster Shop Revo chassis. It had a Illuminator in it with a 2.9 Whipple and a six-speed automatic. It had six RE in it. That's a pretty good setup already. Yeah, it was already killer. Um, but Will would put the Willwood brakes on it, or he had Willwood brakes on it. So I get it to the shop, decide the 2.9 the Whipple. You know, Whipple had come out with the three liter, so I wanted to do an updated version of the Whipple on there, so I've got the three liter on it. Um, if anybody watches any of my videos and knows how I drive, automatic wasn't gonna do so well with me. So it's sitting, it's still at the shop, trying to find something to put it in. But I put a T56 Magnum in here from American Powertrain. Uh, left it, it's a low compression illuminator. So I was able to put more boost on it uh, than I would the high compression, still run 93 octane. Uh, it's got ID 1300 injectors in it, just so if I ever wanted to run ethanol in it. Air motor fuel system, it's got a dual phantom uh, in a tank, just to, all we did for the tank was build a couple brackets and it's like a, just like a generic aluminum race fuel cell in the back. I didn't have a custom tank made or anything, so it's got a, like I said, it's got a dual phantom. We welded a filler neck onto it and it comes through the middle of the bed. When we got the truck together, started mocking it up, I wasn't happy with the ride height um, I called Roadster Shop to ask them about, you know, to have it set up wrong or whatnot. And unfortunately, this chassis is an older design. Um, the geometry was all right, but it had, it was too elevated for me. It was meant for Grandpa. Let's just say it was, how it is. It was meant for yeah, Grandpa. It was, it was Grandpa. So their lead time on a chassis was too long, and I'd already got a good deal on this one. So instead of doing that, I put it on my chassis table and I cut it in three pieces and then I sectioned it myself. So I brought the front up uh, two and a half inches and the back three inches to get it where it sits now. So if the table sit there, it kind of, it Z's up in the front and in the rear. Uh, so this is ride height. I didn't... And it's static for you it's guys. It's static. This is on coils, it's not on bags. No, it's only about, you know, just, it's not very tall. She's... If you get some pictures of that, I'm sure there's well, some. Well, what's even crazier is like, so I've seen it. A lot of the times, I mean, you're literally, I, you could feel the bottom of this is scratched up. Oh, the back's real bad. <laughs> and then <laughs> something that, I mean, we just noticed before we pressed record. Why did you put like this custom, you know, sprayed up paint job on it? Or Well, that was due to a um, trip to Dino's get down. <laughs> it already had some damage to it from rock chips, but it is definitely a whole lot worse now than it was. So, what's your opinion on, on rock chips? Also, I mean, the truck itself is so crazy pretty. Like, it still blows my mind. We've talked about it a bunch, but I'm going to say it again. Like, it's crazy that you really drive this truck. But that's also the purpose of why you built the truck. Yeah, I, I built this for a driver. I didn't want, I didn't want it to be on a trailer um, at all. Our original intent was to drive it to SEMA last year. Um, that was a hoot. Yeah, 
I drove it home. Uh, we had some clutch issues, and it was just due to um, sleep deprivation, I guess. So I, mean, I flew in what a couple days, a few days before. Yeah. And you're like, all right, fly in on Tuesday. We're leaving on Wednesday. I don't think we left till like what, thir like late Thursday or Friday no, or something. No, it had to have been Friday. No, we left Saturday. Saturday night. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. We left Saturday we night. Had lo we loaded it in Monday morning. Yeah. It was hectic. But it was a fun trip. I mean, I thought one of the coolest things, and it's crazy how everything works out at the same time, yeah. but, you know, I thought it was really cool that Luke was able to join you on the trip. And that was also a big reason of why you did this build at that time, right? Yeah. So I started, I started building this truck to take to SEMA. And then I had a, we went to Grand National, um, the Grand National F100 show. And Luke kind of got the bug for his own truck. And I had that truck sitting there behind the shop that I got from Aaron. And that was the body style he liked. So I offered it to him and it the, gave it to him at the Grand National show. I said, what cooler thing to do than to drive it home or drive it to SEMA with mine. So his truck went from, hey, we'll build it over the course of some time to, hey, we gotta have this done in a few months. So we were in the BASF booth, uh, not in their main booth, in, a, in one of their hall sections. And he drove his out there and back. Uh, I trailered mine, unfortunately, there, but we, I was able to drive it back. But I mean, that's, that's just something not a lot of people can say they get to do with their kiddo. Um, you did it twice. What's that? You did it twice. Well, drive the trip. Out there? Yeah. Oh yeah. You just we just now did it. That's why I'm here. Yeah. So yeah, and then we just drove it to Dino's get down. Um, drove both of them out there and back. I didn't have any issues with this. We had one uh, nut that got loose on the power cable and caused this truck to shut off on the highway and it was like a ten minute fix. Yeah. And then we were back on the road. The service truck did it too, and the only problem we had with that was the trans cooler fan didn't uh, wasn't getting power, so we jumpered it and back on the road probably 20 minutes after we figured it out. But so we were talking all, about it. Now yeah. let's show it to them. So let's start from the front to the back. Tell them what you did to it that is different from a regular one, and uh, then let's show them all the goodies on it. Well, unfortunately, it's. Fortunately and unfortunately, I, I wanted it matte because I didn't want to have to keep up with the paint as much as I was going to have to if I, you know, for as much as I'm going to drive it, I guess. So all the lines were fixed on it. We gapped and fixed all of these lines. If anybody knows these trucks, they know none of this stuff fits. So I, I mean, I have months and months in the body shop cutting, welding, grinding, fixing all of this stuff. Um, the bumpers, when we did it, we tucked the bumpers just a little bit, probably only an inch in. They're not wider, they're just tucked to the body a little closer. Yep. Uh, other than that, the, I mean, it's pretty much stock. What's the paint finish or the type of finish on it? So the color is a 1956 Porsche 356 color that I found. It's called Aquamarine Blue. And I, I sprayed a lot of colors trying to find what I wanted because when you matte clear something, sometimes they color shift on you a little bit. And a lot of the blues that I liked were turning green, like a green hue to it. I didn't want a green hue. So um, this color actually turned out perfect. And then the Cerakote that I originally picked for everything, because I'm not much of a shiny guy, um, I shot like three different grays to get to the point where I like this one. And then I had my buddy Tanner come over and fill all my Ford. He did the, the flourish on the hood and then filled in the letters with a different blue that we came up with on that. The factory hood has a bar on the driver's side and then the passenger side is a is the hood latch. Well, in my last truck, it was so rusted out that we made a plate that bolts to it and then had hood pins on it. And I really liked the way that worked because I never had to worry about my hood like flipping up if I was acting crazy. So we ended up doing the same thing with that. So you just gotta reach through the snorkels and then it's got two hood pins in there. And then once those are up, it's easy. The shocks, it had the original hood shocks on it. Um, but when you shut the hood, it never let the hood shut all the way. Kick it up a little bit. So I was trying to figure out hood struts, couldn't figure it up. So I ended up bending this bar and making me a, 
way to hold the hood up that I didn't have to worry about all the time. So, so would you say that this is in the easy way to explain it is like fitting 20 pounds of something into a five pound bucket? Pretty close. Cause this is like one of the tightest, littlest trucks ever. And then you stuck one of the biggest motors Ford ever made inside of it. Yeah, it, it wasn't terrible, terrible. The hardest part of the whole thing, I mean, Roadster Shop figured out the hard part of it, right? Their chassis design. So it fit in there just fine. The hard part was the radiator and the air intake. So with the Whipple, my other truck had a Roush on it and the air intake came out in the back and then it was easy to put the air filter over here. I like this setup on the radiators. So all of my trucks have factory radiators in them, except the service truck. This is a replacement radiator for a um, 15 to 17 Mustang, or 11 to 14 Mustang. Okay. 11 to 14 Mustang radiator, the GT500 fan, and then the overflow tanks to match. So it works out easy, right? Air comes through here. I hate it when you open the hood on these trucks and the radiator sits up that high. So that's one of the biggest reasons why I changed it to begin with. But to take this off, this plate is really thick. Pull this off and then you can get to everything from in here as far as um, AC condenser lines and all that stuff is in there. So, And then what's the story behind the name Bad Intentions? That's how I want to drive it. <laughs> I never have any good intentions when I'm driving it. So it kind of came to Bad Intentions. I love that. And then I'm assuming that the gold was just so you could set, have like a really crazy contrast or what was the reasoning behind yeah, that? I actually wanted to have it gold plated, but ran out of time uh, to get it done. The, if you could see the bottom side of it, which you probably can't, it's probably dirty too, but all the chassis components are that same gold. So the control arms, the sway bars, ends, um, four link bars in the rear, track bar is all that same gold. It looks really cool when it's, it's in the It's too air. low. Yeah. Maybe we'll go back to the shop and put it up on the thing, but maybe not. I love that even the gold leafing on the firewall. My buddy Tanner did that for me. That's all 24 karat gold. He, you know, he spun it all and pulled lines on it for me. So then moving out of the engine bay, I'm assuming this is all hand done, not, you know, st not stencils and stuff. But yeah, he did all that himself. Yep, Tanner did. So badass. And then tell me about your interior. So on the interior, don't mind the rocks, that's from our trip. Um, I wanted it as simple as it could be while still being somewhat clean, right? So I'm not a huge cover the door, door panel person. So it's got full metal doors, no door panels covering anything. The seat, uh, I looked around for a long time for a seat design that I like, and that's what we kind of came up with. I couldn't tell you what the blue material is actually. It's just pretty. Yep. And the, comfortable, I can vouch for that. The cup holder is um, just a, uh, I can't remember the company, I got it from Summit Racing. It was uh, to put a cup holder in your trailer. <laughs> so I cut the ears off of it and put it in there. That's awesome. Uh, I wanted the air conditioning to be kind of like what it would have been if you'd have added it. So that's an early 60s Mustang style underdash that we just adapted the hoses to so that we could have an older look without having like newer style, everything hanging down. Dakota Digital did the gauges for me. Uh, we designed them ourselves and they put the RTX uh, displays in it so that we were able to see like boost and trans temps or anything we wanted to watch with it. That's so cool. Uh, and I love the steering wheel, dude. Yeah, I, I've wanted one of those forever and uh, the guy that did it for me, his Instagram is uh, Steering Wheel Chris, K R I S. And he had, I sent him my logo. He had that middle piece made and then had it all chromed, and then he made the steering wheel for me. I love that. Simple, works, and then you have a stereo in it, but I do. you it's can't got... see a head unit or any of that because it's yeah, the... cool. No, it's just Bluetooth. Let me flip the seat for me. This is, I mean, look at this dash. It's so clean. I love that it just has the Ford covering over there and it's just beautiful. So it's just got 110. See, uh, Audison 10. The Brett, that's my first time ever using a lithium battery just because I, I don't know, I don't know why that made me nervous for the longest, longest time. But that battery feels fake because it's so light <laughs> and it fit in here and I didn't have to worry about anything. So it's worked out pretty good. That is really cool. Um, what else? 
What size wheels and tires are you running? So the front is a 18.8 with a 245.40. And the front and the back is a 18 by 12 with a 335.30 in the rear. Are those the original wheels widened or are those custom wheels? Custom wheels. So um, Chris Coddington made them for me over at Hot Rods by Boyd. I sent him um, the original wheel, like an original 4852 truck wheel, and I sent him an original hubcap, and he redesigned it to look original and sent them back to me. And they look awesome. And they are fantastic. Very balanced. Your rear tire is so freaking wide. I love it. And then your bed floor, I think most people won't believe when we tell them how thick it is, but I remember how thick it was because I had to help you put it on there. You can see it right here. <laughs> so tell them, uh, tell them why you made like the heaviest bed floor ever. So I can use the truck. <laughs> so I wanted a bed floor. I, you know, I didn't want to put wood in it. I wasn't really committed enough to go the diamond plate route yet. So the walls are eighth inch plate skinned on top of on of the outside plate so the outside bed sides are original the inside is eighth inch plate um, and then the floor i think it's three sixteenths plate on the floor and it's got one by one square tubing about every 12 inches and it's just, it looks like a checkerboard under there um, i'll send you those pictures because there's a lot of them but i did it so i could use it for whatever i wanted to use it for the only thing i haven't finished yet was my trailer hitch um, because I would like to be able to build a trailer that matches my bed really to pull around like we went to like that would be cool or whatever yeah but I'd want to find like a early camper like something that would have come in this truck to, to put it. on it yeah dude that would look so that so way cool. the trailer would have the camper on it but it could actually be like a camper right yeah I mean if you go on a road trip we could save some money and not rent hotels yeah stay in some sketchy ones on the road yes um tailgate i just you know we capped the ends of this welded all this up put like an altman style latch on it i don't remember where i got these if i'm being 100 percent honest with you maybe I, th I think maybe it was mid 50s ford okay. made these if i remember right um same with the rear bumper i wanted it to be nice and tucked the original bumper brackets are, are hanging down just a little bit so made the bumper brackets the way we wanted to and then um, made our license plate mount too so that it was tucked up on the one side because tell me about the plates themselves because it's pretty cool those are the original plates right yes so you're not supposed to custom paint your plates and hopefully anybody at the dmv doesn't hear this video but <laughs> so they have to be original colored original styling to pass to be reused so i found the 48 texas plates and I just blasted them, hammered and dollied them, cleaned them all up, and I just black epoxied them, and then ordered uh, some finger paints, essentially, like a gold finger paint for, um, just so I could do the letters. So they looked extremely terrible. But I took them up there, they approved them. When they came back, I wiped off the finger paint, I painted them the, uh, the gold, and then painted the black on top of it and clear coat. So the gold is actually a um, candy. So it's like uh, candy coated. So when the lights hit it, it reflects, but you're not supposed to do that, but that's okay. Well, Nobody's ever said anything. In Florida, I don't know about Texas. In Florida, I got a buddy of mine, plate makers, and I have all of my plates customized, like fully painted. And he said, at least in Florida, the law is as long as a digital plate reader can fully read it, it's legal. So like that, that's very outlined. You could clearly read it. Yeah. So that's what he said. I'm gonna they take go that by. to the bank. When they pulled out the book, they gave me a bunch of shit on it to begin with because the colors, they couldn't, um, it was yellow or gold and they couldn't determine like if the yellow I had was yellow or gold. <laughs> but when they pulled it up online, like there's descriptions huh. um, of what the plate's supposed to look like in Texas and they get, they're pretty strict on it. So Don't mess with Texas. That's right, I guess. Well, I think the only other thing to do is go take it for a drive. We can do that. All right, let's do it.
<laughs> I guess this is one way to enter the freeway. <laughs> Gone, but not forgotten. See ya.